Welcome to our review on conservation of mass. First and foremost, we need to know the law of conservation of mass. So that simply states that atoms cannot be created or destroyed. So the only thing that we can actually do with these atoms is to change how they're joined. And that's literally what we see happening in chemical reactions. We start off with the atoms arranged one way, and then in that chemical reaction, we're gonna change how they're then joined together. But what we will find is that because we obviously have exactly the same atoms at the start with our reactants as we do in our products, then the total mass will stay the same. So if we had 50 grams of reactants, the total mass of all of our products would still be 50 grams. If we consider an example of where we could see this, then one of the key reactions that we could demonstrate this with is a precipitation reaction. So on the balance on the left hand side there, we've got two chemicals. So we've got silver nitrate and we've got sodium chloride. And you can see on the actual scales there that we've got a mass of 92.95 grams in total. Then what we're gonna do is just pour our sodium chloride into our silver nitrate solution. You can see there's a reaction that's occurred because in the beaker on this balance on the right hand side, we've now got a white precipitate. And whenever we talk about precipitate, that would be an insoluble solid. So that's been produced by the reaction between the two solutions. But if we look at the actual reading on that second balance, we can see it's still 92.95 grams. Now, the reason for that is, as we said, we can't create or destroy atoms. If you look at the little diagrams at the bottom with the actual atoms shown, on the left hand side, you can see we've got one silver, three oxygens, one nitrogen, one sodium and one chlorine atom. Now, if we have a look on the right hand side, all we've done there is change how they're actually joined. So the silver and the sodium have changed places. But if you count them all up, we still have one silver, three oxygen, one nitrogen, one sodium and one chlorine. So the number of atoms is exactly the same in our reactants on the left and in the products on the right. The only difference is how they're joined together. One thing we do need to bear in mind, though, is we've got these different kinds of systems that we can have reactions occurring in. The first one we're going to look at is what's called a closed system. Now, a closed system, quite simply, is a container in which no substance could either enter or leave during the reaction, hence closed. So our examples there that we've got, if we're talking about beakers like we saw in our previous example, but that only works if the products that we're making are not gases. Obviously, we couldn't use beakers as a closed system if we were making a gas because the gas would just leave through the top. Alternatively, we could have a flask with a gas syringe attached, which would work brilliantly if we are having a product of a gas, because any gas that's being produced would obviously be taken into the gas syringe. If we consider the other scenario where we have a non-enclosed system, then this quite simply is one in which substances could either enter or leave the reaction mixture. So if we're trying to demonstrate the law of conservation of mass, we couldn't use a non-enclosed system because some of the products could well be lost into the environment. So if you are being asked to demonstrate how the law of conservation of mass comes about, we would have to use a closed system. So we can actually use this idea of conservation of mass to actually calculate unknown quantities. So you could get a question much like the one on the screen here. 2.40 grams of magnesium is heated in the air. 4.00 grams of magnesium oxide are formed. What mass of oxygen was gained? So we know that the actual mass that we start with with our reactants must be the same as the mass of our products. So if we think about what we're starting with, we've got our magnesium and our oxygen. And from that, our only product is magnesium oxide. So we know the mass of our magnesium, 2.40, and we know the mass of our product, the magnesium oxide, is 4.00. So if we put those numbers in, we've obviously got our unknown, which is our oxygen. So all you need to do then is just rearrange it, do 4.00 minus the 2.4, and whatever's left over must be the mass of oxygen because there's nothing else. 
And the reason that we know that is because atoms can neither be created nor destroyed. So the mass of the products must equal the mass of the reactants.